till today because they are a little bit different. Um, we have basic sines, we have basic cosines, we don't have squares, we don't have like cotans or tans that we can swap anything out. We're kind of just sitting here with a 1 minus cos and a sine and a sine and a 1 plus cos. So the very first thing we're going to do always though is rewrite it exactly how it is in the t-table. And then I'm going to work from there. Okay. So basic signs, basic cosines, nothing else on top of it. It's just this way it is. But I do see a 1 minus cos and I do see a 1 plus cos. If I see 1 minus sine or 1 plus sine, I hope you see this as well. What you can do is if you multiply by the conjugates of them, You'll get a Pythagorean theorem identity. You're going to get one of these. Because you'll get a square. So I'm going to do it to either the right or the left. I'm going to pick the right because I have some space over here. So this equals sine x over 1 plus cos x. Same thing. But I'm going to multiply by the conjugate. And that's what people often forget is even an option. So I'm going to multiply by 1 plus, or not plus, that's not the conjugate. 1 minus now this is where we have to listen very very closely when you multiply by the conjugate you will multiply the conjugate ones together they will be multiplied together okay the ones that are not conjugates you will leave separate you will not distribute you will stop yourself from doing it why because look here, I have a sine x on the top right here, and I have a 1 minus cos x on the top, correct? If I embed them, if I distribute them, I'm going to get a sine minus sine cos x, right? Remember, we're trying to get the left-hand side to match the right-hand side. Is that not what we're trying to do here? On the left-hand side, what's in the numerator? 1 minus cos x. So I am going to actually try and keep this, right? And I'm going to try and cancel off the sine x. Am I not? So if I embed the sine x in with it, if I distribute it in, am I going to realize that I can take it back out and then I can cancel it off? No. So whenever you multiply by conjugates in proofs, either 1 plus sine x, 1 minus sine x, 1 plus cos x, 1 minus cos x, you will distribute the conjugates together. But the ones that are not conjugates, you will leave separate because we're going to have to cancel off. Okay? So the top, I'm going to just rewrite in brackets because those are not the conjugates, so I leave them separate. The bottom, I will distribute. Remember, conjugates just get you a difference of squares. They work you it back. So I'm going to get 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times negative cos x is negative cos x. 1 times positive cos x is positive cos x. And then cos x times negative cos x is negative cos squared x. And then these cancel off. And so on the top, I'm left with sine x, 1 minus cos x, all over 1 minus cos squared x. Is 1 minus cos squared x anywhere on my formula sheet? Yeah, equals a sine squared x. So if I look at my formula sheet, I have sine squared x plus, bless you, cos squared x equals 1 if I subtract the cos squared x over. I get sine squared x equals 1 minus cos squared x. So this is equal to sine x bracket 1 minus cos x. And this is good that it's over sine squared x because what am I trying to cancel off? I'm trying to cancel off the sine, right? What is sine squared x just the same as? Sine x, sine x. So I could go like this. Yeah, two sine x's. So I technically could go like this if I wanted to, and then they cancel off right? 
I could technically write it out twice. Do I have to? Could I just cross the square it off? Yes. If you want to write it out twice so you can physically see it, go ahead. Now, do these images match? No, I have to go one more step to get the images to match. So it's 1 minus cos x over sine x. And then left side equals right side. You try example six. This one has a little bit of an extra add-on. On the right-hand side, is there anything I could do in the numerator? If you change the SEC before we do that, what can we do? Take out a GCF of secant. Yeah. They both have a secant in them. So secant x divided by secant x is 1. Sine x times secant x plus sine x secant x divided by secant x is negative sine x. All over cos x. Secant, we can switch to 1 over cos if we want. So we get 1 over cos x technically times 1 minus sine x over 1 divided by cos x. Then I can do my fraction in the top, so I can go 1 minus sine x, so it's 1 times that, over cos x. And then I'm dividing by cos x. And what's cos x technically over if it's over nothing? Can I flip it then? 1 minus sine x over cos x times 1 over cos x. So then I'm left with 1 minus sine x over cos squared x. Or you could leave it as cos x cos x, it's the same thing. Could I work on the left hand side? What's the only thing I could do on the left hand side? Conjugate. So on the top, I'm left with 1 minus sine x. On the bottom, I'm left with 1 minus sine x plus sine x minus sine squared x. Currently our tops match, correct? Our numerators match. That'll cancel. So we're going to be left with 1 minus sine x over 1 minus sine squared x. Anyone have any ideas of what we could do? Yeah, replace it with what? cos squared off of our formula sheet, right? Also, we have a hint. We need cos squared. So we're like, hmm, could it possibly work? The rest of the class, you have time to work on the rest of this booklet. I will be coming around on Monday and checking to see if you've completed it. Does complete it mean correct? No, it means you've attempted each question. Okay, and by circling B and showing no work does not mean attempted the question. Okay? On Monday we start uh, chapter 5, which is trig graphs, and that'll be about a week long. So your test is going to be, your unit test is going to be the following week. 
um, Thursday, May 4th. And then your cumulative exam will be the following Thursday, Thursday, May 11th. So I believe that's 11th. Yeah, that would be seven days. Is that right on here? So Thursday, May 4th. So next week we start not only reviewing trades, but we're going to start reviewing perms and comps, polynomials, transformations, all that stuff. Okay? Good stuff. All right. Remember, we have to start doing cumulatives because you're going to start having a diploma soon. Not soon, soon, but soon enough. So, chapter 5, 6 exam. Thursday, May 4th, I believe. And then cumulative number one exam. Thursday, May 11th. Will be when that is. And some may say, that's not enough time. That is two weeks. You have been given notice. It's not enough time if you're a procrastinator and you wait till May 9th to start studying. Don't be that person. Okay? 